Hey guys, what's up? My name is Deja. If you're new, welcome. If you're returning, hey, thanks for stopping by. Y'all, what in the hell? 2017 is already over. It was just like January two seconds ago. I am shook. This year went by so freaking fast. 2017 to me was a really good year for music. And I thought for today's video, I would be going through some albums that came out this past year that I think deserve a lot more recognition and hopefully expose you guys to new really awesome artists. So for today's video, we're gonna be diving into some albums that killed it in 2017. But before we get on down to today's video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. That helps me out so much. Also, do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos. All right, let's get started. But first and foremost, 2017 had me shook because there were some artists that I was not expecting to see this year. And one of those was Paramore. Paramore dropped after laughter and I think uh, maybe March or April, if I'm not mistaken. But I was not expecting to see some Paramore anytime soon. But when they dropped after laughter, I was shook. That album was so amazing. I really, really loved it. For those of you who don't know, Paramore is um, an alternative rock, you know, punk pop band that have been out for a while, like 12, 13 years. And they had a hiatus after their self-titled record which came out in 2013. And honestly, after that, I was like, wow, Paramore's over fun. But when they dropped After Laughter out of nowhere, I was so excited because I've always been a huge fan of Paramore. When I found out that this album had a lot of um, 80s influences like Fleetwood Mac and U2 and things like that, I was on the fence for a second, but I was like, mm, let me give it a try because I love Paramore. I don't have any songs I don't like from them. And y'all... <laughs> The album revolved around mental health in my opinion. There were songs like Fake Happy or like 26 or Pool that were just so focused on everything going on in your brain and like people on the outside not understanding what you're going through because it's all in your head. After Laughter gets a 10 out of 10 for me. It was absolutely amazing. It was a great comeback album and props to them. The next album that really caught my eye in 2017 was an album called all These Countless Nights by this band that I had discovered called Death Havana. And I found out about them through an alternative press article about artists you're supposed to watch for in 2017. And I was scrolling through Facebook and I was bored and I was like, oh, let me read the article. And so one of the first bands to pop up was Death Havana. It was a music video for their song Sing and I watched it and I really, really enjoyed it. Y'all, listen, <laughs> that is I mean, I'm guessing that Death Havana haven't been in the spotlight for a long time. Like their last album I think came out in 2014, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, All These Countless Nights was incredible. My favorite songs were um, Love, Pensacola 2013, um, St. Paul, uh, Happiness, um, Trigger, and Sing. Those were all really amazing songs. They're kind of, um, to my knowledge, they're, I think they're an alternative rock band as well. So if you're interested in finding a new alternative rock band to obsess over, definitely check out Death Havana, All These Countless Nights. The next album to really rock my world in 2017 was Chase Atlantic's debut album. Listen, <laughs> I honestly, honestly, honestly have to say that this album, this debut album, is going to skyrocket them into stardom in 2018. I'm calling it right now. I have so many <laughs> favorite songs. Um, I have to say, obviously Cassie, Into It, uh, Triggered, Uncomfortable, Keep It Up, um, and hmm, I was about to say No Friends, but it's not all there. Angeline, I don't know what it is, but that song is just so I really, really enjoy Angeline, like, a lot. Low key doesn't make sense, but the whole entire album was amazing, but Angeline just has a special place in my heart. The album was sexy, it was dark, it was it was vicious, it was so, it was all these things that would make an album. And the most amazing thing about Chase and Lennox's debut album was that they did everything themselves, produced it and edited the music. Absolutely everything on this album was done by these three guys. And they're talented and they're really passionate about what they're doing. So if you guys like alternative rock with a mix of R&B and hip hop, definitely, definitely, definitely check out Chase and Lennox's debut album. Now, what kind of video would this be if we didn't talk about Control by SZA? SZA did that. I absolutely loved Control. Control was absolutely unreal. Oh, the whole time listening to that album, I was mad at my boyfriend. I didn't even have a boyfriend. 
<laughs> I was just mad at every boy for no reason. <laughs> Why you bother me? When you know you don't want me. That spoke to me. That was a lyric that spoke to me unlike anything else. My favorite songs off of Control have got to be Prom. I love Drew Barrymore. I love Love Galore and Gojina. Those are my favorites off of Control. Now another band that I think you guys should really pay attention to in 2018 is called The Regrets and they're an LA based uh, band and I first heard about them again through the same alternative press um, article about artists to look out for and The Regrets are really really dope. The first song I heard from them is called A Living, I want to say A Living Breathing Girl or A Living Girl and it's a song basically uh, about all the things that make a girl that people on the outside wouldn't think are attractive. The leader of the band is like, sometimes I'm pretty, sometimes I'm not. So let's take a listen, hit me with your best shot. And I'm like, oh, I think it's funny. So their debut album is called Feel Your Feelings School. And my favorite songs off there are A Living Girl, um, Seashore, Hey Now, and Lady Like What a Bitch. Those are really good songs. So again, if you guys like rock, then definitely check out The Regrets. Two of my favorite YouTubers dropped their debut album this year, and it's Super Fruit, and their album is called Future Friends. I, I just, I love Scott and Mitch so much, and if you guys don't know, Scott Hoying and Mitch Grassi are a part of the acapella group Pentatonix. They branched out to do their own thing with their own YouTube channel called Super Fruit. And so this year they released their debut album under that same name, and the album is called Future Friends. The album is like a modern, mixed with like 80s or 90s flair of music and I absolutely love it so much. It's amazing. Such a good, there were so many good debut albums this year and just albums in general like dang. <laughs> Off of Superfruit's album, some of my favorite songs are Bad For Us, Vacation, Sexy Ladies, Hurry Up, um, Deny You, Goodbye From Lonely, and Future Friends. If you guys need a new YouTuber to watch or you need a new album to listen to that's fun and poppy and a little bit of like 80s, then definitely check out Future Friends by Superfruit. Another debut album that rocked my world, you guessed it, Harry Styles' self-titled debut album. Hello. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say on the internet that I am still a diehard One Direction fan and when I heard that Harry was dropping a debut album, I was a little scared because after Leah came out with his debut stuff, I was like, oh! And then when Niall came out with his debut stuff, I was like, yikes! And then when Louie did it, I was like, oh! And then when Zay did it, I was like, ooh. And then when Harry did it, I was like, true. I was so excited because Harry and Zayn have always been my two favorites and they have the best voices in my family. When I heard Harry's debut album, I was getting like David Bowie vibes, I was getting the Beatles, I was getting Fleetwood Mac, I was getting my life. <laughs> Carolina, I love Kiwi, I love Sign of the Times, obviously. <gasps> Y'all and Sweet Creature. <laughs> Harry did that and I am still so upset that he was snubbed a Grammy. I'm not gonna talk about that though, I just... If you like classic rock vibes, then definitely give Harry Styles' album a listen and you won't be disappointed. The next album on my list that absolutely killed it this year was Melodrama by my girl, Lord. I loved Lord's Pure Heroine album, Best Believe, and when I found out this girl was coming back, I was like, listen, take my coins. <laughs> Lord. I love her quirky style, I love her music, and her voice is to die for. So when Melodrama dropped, I was all up on that album. I was all over it. Oh my Jesus. Melodrama is so personal, and it's emotional, and it's gritty, and it's raw, and it's absolutely amazing. Lord did that. My favorite songs have got to be Liability. I love Supercut. I love Green Light. I love Melodrama. I love Homemade Dynamite. <laughs> I just, the whole album is just so good. And Sober is great. But honestly, Liability has me, it gets me in my feels every single time. Because that's how I feel. I was really able to connect on a very personal and emotional level listening to Liability off of Melodrama. And I have to say that's one of my all-time favorite songs by her. So if you guys like a more slow and like deep and raw type of music, then definitely check out Melodrama by Lord. Now the next album is Bittersweet and it needs to be talked about because it is such a great album. 
But this album is One More Light by Linkin Park, and as you guys are well aware, um, Linkin Park suffered a major, major loss along with the rest of the world when their lead singer Chester Bennington took his life in July of this year. So when I heard about that, I, I was shaken up for sure because Linkin Park was such a huge part of my life growing up and they were childhood heroes of mine. So when I heard about Chester Bennington's death, it was very, very hard. And then when I heard that they had come out with an album, One More Light, I was like, oh, let me give it a shot. I'm gonna be honest. After what happened this year, I honestly, I personally don't expect them to get back together. I personally don't see them continuing the band. Um, so if this were to be their last album, it's amazing. It's beautiful and again, it's personal and it's raw and you can hear the emotion in Chester's voice as we have with Hybrid Theory and um, Metaroa and every other album before. Chester's voice is unlike anything else and his emotion is so palpable and it's real. So if this were to be Linkin Park's final album, I'd be content. It was amazing. Some of my favorite songs were Sharp Edges, Good Goodbye, um, Sorry For Now, and One More Light. So, Chester, Godspeed, my dude. The last album that came out this year that gave me all of my life was What If Nothing by Walk The Moon. And honestly, I wasn't expecting to hear back from them for a while after 2014 when Talking Is Hard came out. And personally, I was a huge fan of that album. I'm a huge fan of everything they put out. And What If Nothing was no exception. That album was amazing. Every single song was so I loved headphones, I loved one foot, I loved kamikaze, and I loved all night. If y'all like alternative music, rock with like a little poppy flair, definitely, definitely, definitely listen to what if nothing I want yeah that's it for today's video if you guys enjoyed it please make sure to give this video a big old thumbs up that helps me out so much also do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos every single week also click the bell so you don't miss out whenever i post and if you want to follow me on all my social media they will all be linked down below like my instagram my twitter my snapchat everything you want to follow me on will be down below and lastly if you are interested in any of the artists that you saw in today's video they will all be linked down below their social media where you can find their music and everything and anything about them will be down below so definitely check them out give them love and support until i see you guys again next time i'll catch you on the flip side